Uh, Tampa Bay next week, you probably lose, but what the hell? It's still fun. Uh, here is my pie chart of praise for the Vikings because they did win, and I have six pieces of pie. I'll start Ooh. at the top and work my way down. Wow, I think there's a lot of pie. Six. I think there's a lot of pie to go around here, including one very, very deserving slice. <laughs> Number one on my list, getting 25% of the pie chart of praise, Cameron Dantzler, rookie cornerback. Cameron Dantzler had a great pick. Um, I believe, according to PFF, I believe he gave up uh, one catch for three yards. But on the catch he gave up, he actually stripped the Jacksonville receiver of said football. He recovered it, okay? Uh, his The two Jacksonville miscues that Cameron Dantzler forced led to 10 points for the Vikings. Uh, and his pick was the first by a Viking cornerback this season. Damn it, that's a good game. Rookie corner, Cameron Dantzler. He targeted targeted the most times, seven times, and only that one catch you speak of. Why were you targeting Cameron Dantzler more than Chris Boyd after you exposed Chris Boyd on the opening drive for a score? Mike Glennon, Doug Marone, and Jacksonville. Is Can it you possible, explain that to me? Is it possible that Mike Glennon, because he just like hasn't played much in three years, hasn't quite gotten past the, like, Oh my God! Factor of playing quarterback yet in the NFL, where I feel like, like he's past that. Like most quarterbacks are thinking on that next level of all right, who, all right, who is the weak link but out he did, here? Who can I expose? But he did it. The, the scripted plays. It's just like okay, Chris Boyd in in the way that Jacksonville was going in the first quarter was on the right side of the field, right or or Jacksonville's left side. You exposed him, so wouldn't you just keep saying, "I'm going to turn to my left and look that way." I mean, most NFL teams you just would say, probably do that. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Yeah. Most football teams Dantzler, would try to do that. Dantzler might not be terrible. Chris Boyd is off to a terrible start. You're, you're asking a lot of rhetorical questions that, are, that have applied to the Jaguars for like two I decades. I, I know. You know, no, hold on a second. 2017, don't forget the AFC title game was Patriots and Jags yeah. while the, the uh, Vikes were being blown out in Philly. So not, anyway. And not because of the Jaguars offense that season. That's very, very true. All right. So 25% goes to Cameron Dancer. 25% goes to and it has to. And it probably should be more, but what the hell? Justin Jefferson. Two targets, two catches, 12 yards for first half. I think we all scratched our heads and said, what are you doing here? Second half, seven receptions, 109 yards, a touchdown, a 40 yard catch. Justin Jefferson, 25%. The This kid's incredible. I mean, I just don't mm -hmm. know what to say by now for a rookie. I mean, we have seen, again, first-round picks, right? Cordero Patterson, Laquan Treadwell. I mean, post-Moss, Troy Williamson. Think about the first-round picks at that position who have failed miserably. <laughs> this guy from day one has gotten it. He's made, I, I really think he's made one Grave mistake, and that was the drop against Dallas. That's it. 15%. This might be too much, but he is the primary focus going into every game of the Vikings offense, and he stresses defenses out. And despite the fact that he played on a bad ankle on Sunday, he had 32 carries for 120 yards and 38 touches, a career high. Jeez. Dalvin Cook, 15%. He's the starting point. What was the what, what were the Vegas odds on Dalvin setting a career high in touches yesterday going into that game? But uh, with zero. All just exactly. Negative zero well, after, point two. After Madison went out, I'm sure it actually probably went up. They weren't going to give Mike Boone all those touches that Madison But not had. 38 touches. I actually thought they were going to give Mike Boone some touches. So did I. But they didn't give him any, right? I don't think he no, played. No, he had zero carries. I, think, I thought it maybe had a couple. Wow. Well, uh, no, Abdullah had a carry. Yeah, Abdullah. Abdullah. Abdullah did. Cousins had three. So, and, and two, <laughs> Cook. Eight consecutive carries before Zim finally said, "All right, Bailey, go kick that twenty-three yard begrudgingly field goal." Only because Damn it. only because Dakota Dozier right. is terrible. You're right. So that and that would have been nine consecutive carries. The Rock knows how you feel about pie. Fifteen percent goes to uh, Dalvin Cook. Fifteen percent, Kirk Cousins. So this is a game. So. Cousins threw a pick that I think was Cook's fault because Cook didn't turn around, and it was definitely a communication problem. Uh, the fumble that Cousins is going to be charged with at the one when the Vikings sh should have scored, really also, that for sure should go to Cook. But this was, guys, the definition of the type of game Kirk Cousins freaks out in, like it just goes crazy. And you're like, what yeah. just happened here? 
and he didn't. He didn't. He, I would argue he didn't that play great. He did a he couple did. times. Like I, that that interception. I agree. Why wasn't Delvin Delvin's turned turn around? Up. They've got but, somebody but, screwed up, but bad. he wasn't turned around, and Kirk still threw it. Yeah. So. Right. He freaked out a little there. But you have to anticipate that the guy is going to eventually. My, but my point is, in Cousins' defense here, my point is, this is the type of game where the Vikings ordinarily or often, it seems like, would lose with Cousins, and we would all dump on Kirk, rightfully so. They didn't lose. 15% of the pie chart of praise goes to the fact that, that the quarterback didn't completely melt down. 10% goes to... And this is weird because they did give up the uh, game tying score and the two point conversion late, but 10% goes to a defense that thanks to Jacksonville for it's not one, not two, not three, but four, four turnovers by the Jaguars, including the Mike Lennon throw that was picked off by Harrison Smith in OT. I don't know exactly if the guy ran the wrong route or what, but anyway, 10% goes to the Vikings defense because they did maintain their wits enough uh, to make plays to yeah. get the ball back. And then 10% to reach the final here goes to the Jacksonville Jaguars <laughs> just for being <laughs> you. Yeah. One in 10, one in 10 coming into this game. The Jaguars <laughs> are the National Football League's vaccine for teams that need a boost. <laughs> they literally, they are the COVID-19 vaccine for the Vikings. Out. Exactly right. Are the uh, Vikings are the Vikings considered like frontline workers in they the must NFL? Be. Do they get the they first the first round of vaccination? But my God, you know, I mean, this is incredible. <laughs> the Vikings played what really amounted to on Sunday a horrific football game, and I never really sat in that press box and thought, "Oh my God, they're really going to lose." <laughs> like I know it's sixteen to six, and I'm like, "This is incredible," because I think that they, I I think that this game is loser proof. Yeah. So. 10% Jaguars, 10% Vikings defense, 15% goes to Dalvin Cook, 15% goes to Kirk Cousins, and then the final 50% of the pie split between Cameron Dantzler and Justin Jefferson, two ro two rookies who had really good days. Love it. I've got, I've got additional thoughts. The Rock knows how you feel about pie. And some of these things, but just one quick note. I felt the same way, oddly, as as muddy as that game was and the Vikings get the ball in overtime and then they just like crap all over themselves on their first drive and they punt it away. And like in a normal game, it's like, wow, the Jaguars are going to get great field position and have a chance to just kick a field goal. And at no point did it ever <laughs> even cross my mind that they weren't going to just throw up on themselves. The whole time I'm thinking know, they'll, they'll either muff the punt or Glennon will get sacked or like something will happen. The Vikings will get at least one more shot. And, and that's what happened. So, yes. All right. So here's mine. The Rock knows how you feel about pie. By the way, Bears vent line oh, is yeah. coming up shortly. Don't don't think that we forgot about Bears vent line today. We've got some clips where yesterday's meltdown came from, courtesy of our friends in Chicago on the score on ESPN 1000. So stick around for that here. I'm going to bounce around with four pieces of pie. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to, I'm just going to pick up where Judd left off. I'm actually giving half of my pie to the Jaguars for being a third world country football team. <laughs> like think about all the things yesterday that happened. The Vikings were this is this all these classic trap game things. Vikings uh best remaining defensive player Eric Kendricks is doing what is it called the karaoke like the Karaoke's. what's the step over thing. Yeah. And he tweaks his his calf again uh from early in the week he tweaked it in practice and he's just like out for the game 30 seconds before kickoff. Of course that happens, right? Yep. And then uh, the Vikings have a fumble inside the Jaguars' five-yard line. They throw a ridiculous pick six to start the second half. They fall behind by 10 points in the second half. All these things combined into a stew. And yet the game, like Judd said, was never truly in doubt for me <laughs> because it. it was the Jaguars. So, I don't know. Uh, I guess the Jaguars have been doing this sort of thing all season because they've lost a lot of one-score games in which most opponents probably felt the same way. Oh, that was a little closer than we thought, but never in <laughs> doubt because it's the Jaguars. The Rock knows how you feel about pie. All right, bouncing around here, you gave praise to Cam Dantzler. I'm going to save 10% of my pie chart of praise mm -hmm. for Ifadi Adenabo. All right, no Kendricks, no Hunter, no Barr, no Michael Pierce, no Unique Ngakwe. It's just a bunch of backups and rookies and Harrison Smith, basically. Someone needs to step up. Cam Dantzler stepped up in the secondary. Adenabo yesterday, according to Pro Football Focus, generated eight 
pressures. Eight pressures by himself. Against the Cowboys, the Vikings defense in total generated four pressures or five pressures or something. Odenabo on his own. He got home once for one sack, but eight pressures in this game. It was one of the best defensive line performances of the season in terms of rushing the passer. Mm -hmm. That's going to go kind of under the radar because of the game that Dantzler had and all the other crap that happened. But Odenabo was great in this game, making life uncomfortable for Mike Lennon. 10% 10% goes to Justin Jefferson for just being one of the best receivers in the NFL. Just being you. Just for existing. He gets 10% of my pie chart of praise. And I mentioned the stat off the top. He has the second most receiving yards through 12 games as a rookie in NFL history behind only Odell Beckham Jr. And uh, and if you go back and look at Randy Moss's rookie numbers, like these are going to be a little bit different because I think Moss was more touchdown heavy, uh, but they're both going to be very similar. Now, I think putting up these numbers is a little easier in 2020 than it was in 1998 because you could just, it was harder to get away from the clutches of defenders in 98. So I'm not putting Jefferson on that level quite yet, but he is definitely on the level of the best receivers in the NFL. And getting him the ball as much as they did in the second half was a huge part of why they won that game. But, gentlemen, my final piece of pie The Rock knows how you feel about pie is reserved for the man. Oh, boy. Who on? once again overcame adversity. We got the hat back? Some of it was self-inflicted. It's a new hat. But my guy. Hey, hold on, I gotta see it. It's a new hat. Kirk Cousins has a new nickname, boys. Mr. Game-winning drive. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Kirky boy has three game-winning drives on the season so far. Yep. Three times as many as he had in his first two seasons as Vikings starting quarterback combined. He had one game winning drive in the regular season. Yep. 2018 and 19. He now has back to back and three on the season overcoming adversity, overcoming the cesspool that is the Jacksonville Jaguars and the vortex they pull you into and completing a bunch of passes on the second over. We won't talk about the first overtime drive or that weird decision by Mike Zimmer to uh, and I'm saying Mike Zimmer because he's the CEO of the whole team. Yes. On third and one on the edge of field goal range in the fourth quarter, they throw a 35 yard bomb to Adam Thielen. Like some weird things going on, but in the end, Kirk Cousins gets the ball, throws yep. a bunch of passes to get the Vikings into field goal range. Yep. And then the Dalvin show commenced because they didn't trust uh, Dan Bailey to get the job. And done. you get you get the credit because you are the one that challenged Kirk. Listen, I mean, challenged, not Zimmer, encouraged. Not Kubiak, none of those people. Not Clint Kubiak, Kirk who Kirk yells at now. Yeah. No, no, no. Phil hey, Mackey. 20 points, man. Yes, you gave us a chance at the end. But I got three words for you. You like that? Yeah! You like that? <laughs> Mr. Game Winning Drive, Kirk Cousins. 30% of the pie chart of praise. And I will tell you. Eight consecutive handoffs. No one's talking about the supreme concentration to hand off eight times perfectly with the game on the line in overtime. One mistake, and the Jaguars pick that ball up and go the other way. We saw, Those we, were perfectly executed handoffs. We saw it, right? At the goal line. Yeah. We saw what happens when it doesn't go, go right. No, I mean, did you see the form, too, by Kirk? And, and he, he went up to Dalvin at the sidelines at the end and told him, like, you got to put that ball. You that's got, you got, you, that's leadership. That's leadership. Communication. Accountability. Making sure that everything. Dalvin right. said, "No bleep, dude." But listen, Dalvin can be mad, but a great leader walks up and visually demonstrates on national TV. Well, regional TV. Yeah, I was going to say very regional, ja- very regional TV, and the yesterday. Twin Cities, and maybe yeah. Hudson. I love how they had they had. So Beth Moens, I thought was <laughs> I, I've never been like the biggest Beth Moens fan. Uh, Give me Doris Burke when it comes to uh, the best women play-by-play announcers. But Jay Feely, I feel like, is still a little gun-shy from that YouTube clip that keeps surfacing of him botching the Mac field goal, where, like, this kicker kicks a field goal, like, 40 yards to the right, and he thought it went in and brought them to commercial break, all excited about the game being tied. Feels a little gun-shy with his takes on these broadcasts. And then they had, like, two camera angles for the whole game. It was, like, public (laughs) access TV yesterday on CBS. They had, like... They had like an overhead cam that was clearly yeah. hanging from I like the top of US Bank Stadium. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then they had the standard camera, and then they had like a guy walking around with, you know, <laughs> you know, it was it was literally like you know, cable twelve doing that game yesterday, but Kirk Cousins, <laughs> yep, my guy. 
prevailed in the end. Kirk Cousins game. thrives in, in games that are shown in 100% of two markets. Yeah. That's what we know now. He is, the Rock knows how you feel he is about Mr. Pie. Regional Television. Amazing. So, all right, Dex, what's your pie chart? Yeah, I got 100% to Mr. Game Winning Drive. No, no, no. I got four pieces of pie. I'm actually going to start at the bottom and work my way up like a gentleman. Uh, I'm going to go with Cam Dantzler, the rookie cornerback, to start things off. 10% of my pie. Uh, the number one PFF grade for the Vikings on defense yesterday, a 93 grade. He only allowed the one reception. He forced the, he had an interception. Uh, he was very impressive yesterday. He was probably the best cornerback on the field. And like Judd said, I cannot believe it took till week 13, 14, until a cornerback got in interception. So 10% of my pie to the rookie Cam Dantzler. Kirk Cousins gets 20% of the pie. Now, this wasn't Kirk's prettiest game from a stat line as a whole. A 25 QBR. Actually, Mike Glennon outperformed him just in terms of QBR. But guess what? When the game was on the line, a new hat came on and Mr. Game Winning Drive delivered for the Minnesota Vikings. So, Kirk, you get you get some praise. Three touchdowns. You did all right. Seven seven point one yards per attempt. Did you guys see what happened to it? It looked on TV like there weren't any fans in the stadium. There weren't this um, time. But that wasn't quite accurate because when the Vikings got the ball for that second overtime drive. Yep. And there was a little tension in the huddle. And Kirk gathered everyone in the huddle and said, hey. Is that John Candy over there in the first row? U.S. Bank Stadium. His te- teammate said, "No, he's dead." Sorry, is that John Candy. Sorry, that's not no. John. He's been dead. Got for X's over his years. eyes, but I think that's <laughs> he's John been dead Candy. for a good thirty years. Kirk, let's God. get back to you handing off to Dalvin. Zim said you're doing a great job of handing off to Dalvin. The Rock knows how you feel about pie. All right, the next piece of pie. Thirty percent of the pie he was the unsung hero. I thought of yesterday's game. Yep, Harrison Smith. 30% of this pie. Look at the stat stuffing line for Harrison Smith yesterday. Mm-hmm. Six tackles, half a sack, one tackle for a loss, two passes deflected, a quarterback hit, and a big time interception. Wow. I mean, that is a Everything. quietly just a very, very solid game. And him and Eric Kendricks are the leaders of that defense. When Kendricks pulls his hamstring, just like I do getting out of bed in the morning, uh, Harrison Smith had to carry that defense. And it was very impressive. So Harrison Smith, 30% of the pie. Great job. All right, final piece of pie, 40%, the biggest chunk of this pie today, goes to rookie Justin Jefferson for exploding in the second half. He finishes the day nine catches, 121 yards, one touchdown, continues to be a humongous deep threat. Probably would have had a buck 60 if that uh, pass interference wasn't called on him either. He took things over. It is amazing watching this guy explode. We got to talk about that play. It's been a, he's been an absolute treat and I when he wasn't going when Kirk wasn't going to him in the first half and that's what we were talking about too during the game is like, what, why is he keep going to thing? He keeps going to Thielen, but then he gives it to Justin Jefferson. Big plays happen. So 40% of my pie to Justin Jefferson. So as a whole, 10% Cameron Dantzler, 20% Kirk Cousins, Harrison Smith, 30%, and Justin Jefferson, 40%. That is my The Rock chart. knows Praise. how you feel about pie. That, that PI on Jefferson is exactly why you can always throw him the ball. He took the, def- he had time. The game moves so slow to him. He took the defender and ragdolled him and threw him out of the way and caught the football. Was he really even that handsy, though? It was yeah. very, it was oh, very, he completely it was very overpowered him. No, he gave him a, but he, he's so strong. Like this kid can do everything basically. Right. So like he basically, the defender's like, what happened? <laughs> Justin, Justin, and he caught the ball too. Here's my question. I will not pretend, you know, like. NFL scouting is an easy job or that I have any clue what I'm doing. If someone said, all right, here's the keys to the draft war room, like rank all the players. Like I'm not, yeah, I, agree. I have no yeah. idea, but no. how is it that you can watch? And this is different iterations of the Vikings front office, but I know how going. can you watch Troy Williamson and then watch Laquan Treadwell and then watch, and I get the Cordero Patterson thing, and he's become one of the great return men in NFL history, so I get that. The athletic ability is off the charts. So and then you watch Justin, so let's even take Cordero off the table. You watch Laquan Treadwell, and then you watch Troy Williamson. Total package. Size, speed, agility, route running, hands, everything. Yes. And then compare those two busts to Justin Jefferson. Like, Justin Jefferson, even in college, was putting up ridiculous numbers, you could just watch that guy in big college football games and say, okay, that there's something different about that guy. Sure. How do you, how, how like, how is Troy Williamson drafted higher than Justin Jefferson? I think like, I can explain It doesn't this. make sense to me. I think I can explain this. So on Troy, they got, they basically, he is why the combine is the devil because they basically saw him run and thought there's no way that he can miss. And it's like, okay, have we really examined his 
ability to play, you know, the position itself. Right. But they looked at that speed and thought, oh, this is going to be incredible. But and like I they dismissed. But here, so on Treadwell, I think what they did, Phil, was I think they literally took what they thought would be the best fit for the third receiver. Um, with a first round pick. With a first round pick <laughs> and a guy who didn't have really great speed, but I think they thought he'd be a good possession guy. With Jefferson, it's the, the first. box out on third down. But but this is what this is also why I object so strongly to teams that thinking that their psychological evaluations of players work, because like with Laquan, if you had really broken things down and gotten into routes and stuff, he wasn't that that great. I think Jefferson's starting point is yes, he's a freak. But I all but there's also a really important conversation to be had about how much he does right. Which we're just like, of course he does. He's a pro, but that's not true. There was also all like these Patterson. questions about, well, is he just a slot guy? Is he just going to be a, a an undersized slot guy? It's like, uh, no. Nope. Have you scouted before? Like, how are these even? Que- how how are these these huge questions even still existing? It I don't know. It doesn't. But I if, mean, they're not anymore, obviously. But if if Cordell could have run a route like really well, I would have loved to go back and see that now, because I do think that. Athletically, he is and was a freak. Yeah. So I think that he would have been great. Uh, but yeah, it's just, but like these teams, to your point on what you're saying, these teams spend so much time like being like, well, we sat him down and we did this and that. And you're like, okay, then why do you have such big whiffs at times? And then you come back with this hit, which is humongous. Yeah. But th- I think the funniest thing about the Williamson pick is they got so obsessed with his straight line speed, right? Which you basically yeah. never use in the NFL as a receiver. Only after well, you've done, yeah. the only time you ever really use your straight line speed is after you've already caught a ball and then you're trying to outrun defenders. But all the things <laughs> but, that lead into catching a ball are the most important. And at that point, Randy Moss was probably at that point, the greatest receiver in franchise history. But the other guy, the the one B Chris Carter who the Vikings had seen for, you know, 10, 15 years as this amazing Hall of Fame receiver, couldn't outrun a potted plant in the prime of his career and still managed to catch 12, 15 touchdown passes and go over 1,000 yards every year and catch 120 passes. And on Troy, how do you not realize that he can't do the one fundamental thing that makes or breaks you? Catch a football. <laughs> right. 